So diabetic nephropathy is the process by which uh, the diabetes affects the kidney. And uh, there, there are early stages of kidney disease that we can't detect. Or, and we don't have tools to detect. And there are later stages of kidney disease that we can detect. The problem with diabetic nephropathy is over time, it makes the kidneys leak and followed by uh, that leakage of, from the kidneys is toxic and, and it affects kidney function. And over time, kidney function declines. So therefore the kidney function slows. Uh, and unfortunately, in many cases, these people end up with kidney failure and the need for treatments such as dialysis. The early stages of uh, diabetic nephropathy involves increased pressure in the filter of the kidney called the gromulus. Well, we don't have good signs uh, or tools to detect this, but that's one of the earlier signs. But what we can detect in the urine is very small amounts of protein leakage uh, that comes out in the urine that we can detect with routine uh, clinical uh, tools. Uh, it is important for people with diabetes to have this check done at least once a year, if not once or twice a year. The late, later stages of kidney disease unfortunately involve uh, reduction in kidney function. So the kidneys slow over time. That can be detected on a blood test quite easily, and that is routine uh, to check this in people with diabetes over uh, uh, every year or so. And this should be definitely checked in a patient's annual review of their diabetes management. So my approach to treating or preventing kidney disease is really multi-pronged approach. So we need to look at blood pressure control, which is absolutely vital. Uh, we need to look at diabetes control, so glucose lowering treatments with the best treatments. We need to look at weight management, and we need to look at uh, blood cholesterol lowering. So all these factors uh, predispose to kidney dysfunction and worsening of nephropathy. But in particular, there are certain newer medicines available that actually can help uh, prevent and slow the, the decline of kidney function, thereby preserving people's kidney function. So really, to treat kidney disease, you need to look at a number of parameters. It's not just in one area. And if you can manage those parameters well, you know that the, the kidney health of your patient is going to be hopefully well, well protected. So lots of patients who develop diabetes, unfortunately, go on to develop heart disease and also kidney disease. And many people ask me why, why those two conditions uh, are associated? Why are they so commonly occurring in patients together? Well, unfortunately, the process by which diabetes affects organs is the same. It affects small blood vessels in the kidneys and small blood vessels around the heart. And over time, uh, the heart gets affected and also the kidneys. So it's really common to see people with kidney disease, uh, unfortunately, developing a condition called heart failure, uh, but also uh, are at higher risk of developing heart attacks. So there are two different types of heart disease that is common to see in people with kidney disease. And conversely, people with kidney disease are more likely to develop uh, kidney dysfunction and, and reduced kidney function. So heart disease is unfortunately more common in people with type two diabetes and type one diabetes. How more common is it? Well, we know from many studies and looking at hundreds of thousands of patients, it's at least two and a half times more common in people with diabetes. So if you take two patients, exactly the same in every other way, age, uh, weight, blood pressure, but one has diabetes and one does not, the actual risk is over double of developing heart disease in, in that person with diabetes. So we know it's incredibly common. Uh, we now know uh, we have strategies in preventing heart disease, which is great. Uh, many fewer patients are developing heart disease that have diabetes, which means we're doing a, a better job. But unfortunately, not everybody gets access to, to all these, uh, uh, all this management. And, and, and I guess sometimes it's difficult uh, with complexities of patients to manage uh, these risk factors effectively. So to prevent heart disease, we need, again, good blood pressure control, 
good diabetes control, uh, good control of blood cholesterol, and good control of weight. So there are a number of things that we need to control to prevent your patient or my patient developing uh, heart disease. Uh, and how do we do that? Well, there are a number of, of drugs we can use that, are, that uh, are very effective in reducing cholesterol. Statins are very effective. We know there are very good agents that reduce blood pressure. And there are very good uh, treatments for diabetes that reduce glucose. And, and uh, we know that some of these agents uh, actually affect weight. What we should be doing in patients who are at high risk of heart disease or indeed have had a previous heart attack is really use some of the newer therapies that help promote weight loss and thereby uh, reducing risk of developing further heart disease. Indeed, some of these agents have been shown to prevent cardiovascular disease uh, in people with type 2 diabetes. So we should, really should be aiming to use these agents earlier uh, in patients who we uh, assess as being high risk. There are three main treatments that these are glucose lowering treatments. So they're treatments for diabetes, but the side effect or the positive adverse effect is they help prevent heart disease. Uh, we know metformin uh, is a very commonly used drug uh, for diabetes, usually the first drug that patients are started on. We know over time, there's some benefit in terms of preventing heart disease. And this has been shown in studies that have spanned uh, you know, over a decade ago. So it's a helpful medication. But we know metformin in many patients over a long period of time is not enough to control their diabetes because over time, diabetes progresses and glucose levels therefore rise. And that's the natural history of type 2 diabetes. So what are the other drugs, the newer drugs that can help prevent heart disease? Well, we know uh, that a gut hormone called GLP-1, so this is a hormone that we all produce in, in the gut, actually uh, when we use it in a, in a form of a drug to get much higher levels in the blood, actually prevent cardiovascular disease. Until now, these have been injections because it's not been possible to, to formulate a tablet, but we now know a tablet has been recently available uh, with this sort of gut hormone. So these prevent stroke, these prevent cardiovascular disease, and should be used early in people who are at higher risk. The other uh, major advance in the last five years or so uh, is uh, a tablet that works on the kidney to prevent, to essentially allow the kidney to release glucose. And we know that tablet is also helpful to prevent heart disease, in particular heart failure. Lots of patients unfortunately develop heart failure who have to type 2 diabetes. So this, this drug is called the SGLT2 inhibitor class of medication. There are a number of them available. They all are helpful in preventing heart disease.